and welcome to our channel. My name is Dmitry and I'm a part of the Exact Product Research team. As always, I want to encourage you to check out our website for more information about us. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to make sure that you see the upcoming videos. We are continuing a series based on the ISTQB Certified Tester AI Testing Solace. Today, we will go over two chapters. Chapter 9, titled Methods and Techniques for the Testing of AI-Based Systems, and Chapter 10, titled Test Environments for AI-Based Systems. Let's begin with test techniques. They help identify test conditions, test cases, and test data. Some techniques are tailored to certain situations and test levels. Others are applicable to all test levels. When creating test cases, testers combine them to achieve the best results from the test effort. The use of test techniques in the test analysis, test design, and test implementation activities can range from very informal to very formal. The appropriate level of formality depends on the context and the maturity of test and development processes, time constraints, safety or regulatory requirements, the knowledge and skills of the people involved, and the software development lifecycle model. Here is something we have to pay close attention to. And the serial attack is when the trained model is given deceptive data to cause it to provide incorrect predictions. This was first tried on spam filters that were tricked by slightly modifying a spam email without losing readability. The next attempts were made on image classifiers by simply changing a few pixels to persuade a neural network to change its image classification. The serial examples can be transferable, so if one causes a machine learning system to fail, then it will probably cause another system trained to do the same task to fail as well. This can happen even if the second machine learning system has been trained with different data and is based on different architectures. White box adversarial attacks happen when the attacker knows the training algorithm and its parameters. The black box ones occur after the attacker explores the model functionality to attempt to build its clone and then use a white box approach, leveraging the fact that the results are transferable and the adversarial example will normally work on the original model. In order to stop this from happening, adversarial examples are identified and added to the training data, making sure that the model learns to correctly recognize them. Next is data poisoning. Data poisoning attacks have two aims, inserting backdoors for future intrusions or corrupting training data so it gives us incorrect predictions. Poisoning attacks may also cause the machine learning system to misclassify in specific situations. A common example is falsely report spam emails as not being spam. Various tactics can help us spot poison data. For instance, exploratory data analysis shows poison data as outliers. Also, strong data acquisition policies can ensure the origins of training data, limiting the chances of it being poisoned. We can try using A-B testing to check that the updated version of the system is closely aligned with the previous version. In addition, regression testing of the updated system with a trusted test suite could potentially detect if a system was poisoned. Then we have pairwise testing. As a rule, the number of parameters for an IB system is very high, especially when we use big data or interact with the outside world. In this case, exhaustive testing would yield an infinite number of tests, so we have to utilize techniques to decrease it. In comes the pairwise testing. It is based on the observation that the majority of faults are caused by interactions of two factors at most. In theory, pairwise-generated test suites cover all combinations of those pairs, therefore they are much smaller than the exhaustive ones, yet still very effective at finding defects. In practice, even the use of pairwise testing can result in extensive test suites, and the addition of automation and virtual test environments often becomes necessary to allow the required number of tests to be run. When we have a test oracle problem when testing AI-based systems, Back-to-back -back testing or differential testing could serve as a solution. Here, an alternative version of the system is used as a pseudo-oracle, and its outputs are then compared with the system under test results. This pseudo-oracle could be on a different platform, with a different architecture, and with a different programming language. But when we test functionality, we don't have to apply our non-functional acceptance criteria to the pseudo-oracle, which makes it far less expensive. In some situations, it may also be possible to create a pseudo-oracle using non-AI software. 
for pseudo oracles to be effective, there should be no common software elements in the pseudo oracle and the system under test. A B testing is a method where the response of two versions of the program to the same inputs are compared to establish which is better. It's a statistical testing approach which typically requires the comparison of test results from several test runs to determine the difference between the programs. A-B testing may help solve the test oracle problem where the existing system is used as a partial oracle. It can be used to test AI-based systems updates by checking that the updated variant performs as well as or better than the previous variant. A-B testing can also be used to test self-learning systems. When the system makes a change, automated tests are run and we compare the results with those before the change was made. If the system is approved, then the change is accepted. Otherwise, the system reverts to its previous state. The biggest difference between A-B testing and back-to-back -back testing is that we use A-B testing to compare two versions of the same system, and we use back-to-back -back testing to detect defects. Metamorphic testing is relatively new and different from the traditional test techniques, because the expected results of the follow-up test cases are not absolute values, but relative to the expected results. It is aimed at generating test cases based on a past source test case. The idea is making one or more follow-up test cases by changing the source test case based on a metamorphic relation, which is based on the property of a required function of the test object that tells us how a change in input is reflected in the expected results. For example, using the same average function, a metamorphic relation can be created by multiplying each element of the input set by 2. This would make the expected result to the original expected result multiplied by 2. Similarly, any other value could be used as a multiplier to potentially generate an infinite number of follow-up test cases. Metamorphic testing can be used for most test objects and can be applied to both functional and non-functional testing. In the area of AI, metamorphic testing has been used for testing image and voice recognition, search engines, and route optimization. It can also be useful when it is impossible to verify that any source test case is correct. In this case, metamorphic testing generates one or more test cases which, when run, will create a set of outputs where the relationships between the outputs can be then checked for validity. So we don't know if the individual tests are correct, but the relationships between them must hold true, thus providing confidence in the program. Experience-based testing includes error guessing, exploratory testing, and checklist-based testing, all of which can be applied to the testing of AI-based systems. Error guessing is typically based on testers' knowledge of typical developer errors and failures in similar systems. An example of error guessing applied to AI-based systems could be the use of knowledge about how machine learning systems have failed in the past due to the use of systematically biased training data. In exploratory testing, tests are designed, generated, and executed in an iterative manner, with the later tests based on the results of earlier tests. This is especially useful when there are poor specifications or test oracle problems, which is often the case for AI-based systems. This type of testing is a good addition to the more systematic testing, such as metamorphic testing. A tour is a metaphor used for a set of strategies and goals for testers to refer to when they perform exploratory testing organized around a special focus. Typical tours for the exploratory testing of AI-based systems might focus on the concept of bias, underfeeding, and overfeeding. Machine learning systems are highly dependent on the quality of training data. Exploratory data analysis is where data is examined for patterns, relationships, trends, and outliers. It involves interactive hypothesis-driven exploration which requires tool support in two areas. Interaction with the data to allow analysts to better understand complex data and data visualization to allow them to easily display analysis results. The use of exploratory techniques primarily driven by data visualization can help validate the machine learning algorithm being used, identify changes that result in efficient models, and leverage the main expertise. As for checklist-based AI testing, Google suggests a set of 28 machine learning tests written as assertions in the areas of data, 
model development, infrastructure, and monitoring, which is used as a testing checklist for machine learning systems. An AI-based system will typically include both AI and non-AI components. The test techniques selection for the non-AI components is generally the same as for any conventional testing. For the AI-based components, the choice may be more constrained. To help with that, a test oracle problem could be mitigated by the following. Back-to-back -back testing requires test cases to be available with an equivalent system to act as a pseudo-oracle. For regression testing, for example, it can be a previous version of the system. A-B testing often uses operational inputs as test cases to compare two variants of the same system using statistical analysis. A-B testing can be used to check for data poisoning of new variant or for automated regression testing of a self-learning system. Metamorphic testing can be used by inexperienced testers to cost-effectively find defects. Adversarial testing is typically appropriate for machine learning models where the mishandling of adversarial examples could have a significant impact or where the system may be attacked. Similarly, testing for data poisoning may be appropriate for machine learning systems where the system may be attacked. Pairwise testing is often appropriate for the complex AI-based systems with multiple parameters. Experience-based testing is often suitable for testing AI-based systems, especially for consideration of the data used for training and operational data. Exploratory data analysis can be used to validate the machine learning algorithm, identify efficiency improvements, and leverage domain expertise. In the specific area of neural networks, coverage of the network is often suitable for mission-critical systems. To better understand how to apply or generate the testing techniques for AI components, we can divide the strategies by analogy with conventional systems into black box, white box, and data box. In the case of black box, we are focused on the output of a neural network. With white box, we assess the behavior of the inner parts of a neural network. And in case of data box, we focus on the testing of the data that we need for model training, validation, and so on. Let's talk about black box first. Input level tests analyze the predictions of a model with a given input. As a black box technique, it does not investigate the inner structure of a model. Instead, it focuses on the model's reactions and tries to identify potential reasons for its unexpected behavior. The mutational approach helps investigate how a system reacts to several similar inputs. It makes it possible to see the discrepancy in prediction, and in some cases, it will depend on the input parameters. However, the approach has one major flaw. Even though a mutation is set by a predefined algorithm, from a business point of view, the process is unpredictable. It will find bugs, but with limited reproducibility, which means it will be difficult to find the same bugs with the same mutation algorithm in different models. This contradicts with software testing verification validation objectives. The combinatorial approach tests all relevant combinations of input values. It has a high level of versatility. It is easier to apply the same approach to different systems, retaining reproducibility, which yields a higher probability of finding the same defects in different systems. From the software testing perspective, it provides a high level of verification if software behaves properly. Although the validation is still low because it does not check if the software does what it's intended to. The business logic approach is closer to validation level ones, since it answers the question of whether a system meets the stakeholder's expectations or not. But it also comes short, because we lack the variability of tests related to the non-deterministic nature of machine learning system. In other words, a scenario written in business language is a high-level one and does not deal with data bias or complex neural relations properly which constitutes verification. Achieving white box test coverage criteria is mandatory for some safety-related standards and is often recommended for other critical applications. Monitoring and improving coverage leads to increased confidence in the test object. But assessing neural networks coverage provides little value as the same code is run each time the neural network is executed.
Instead, coverage should be based on the structure of the neural network, and more specifically, the neurons and their activational values. Assessing the coverage for neural networks is a new field of study. First academic papers appeared in 2017, which means there is little objective evidence available. But statement and decision coverage have been around for over 50 years, and there is still little evidence of their efficacy. And that's despite the fact that they have been mandated when testing medical devices and avionics systems. The following approaches have been proposed by researchers. Neuron coverage. Full neuron coverage requires that each neuron in the neural network achieves an activation value greater than zero. It is very easy, and research has shown that almost 100% coverage is achieved with a few test cases. This coverage measure may be most useful to serve as a red flag when it is not achieved. Threshold coverage. Full threshold coverage requires that each neuron achieves an activation value greater than a specified threshold. This type of coverage has been given this name here in order to easily distinguish it from neuron coverage with a threshold set to zero. Sign change coverage. To achieve full sign change coverage, test cases need to cause each neuron to achieve both positive and negative activation values. Value change coverage. To achieve full value change coverage, test cases need to cause each neuron to achieve two activation values, where the difference between the two values exceeds some chosen value. Sign-sign coverage. This coverage considers pairs of neurons in adjacent layers. For a pair of neurons to be considered covered, a test case needs to show that changing the sign of a neuron in the first layer causes the neuron in the second layer to change its sign, while the signs of all other neurons in the second layer remain unchanged. It is also worth mentioning that researchers have been experimenting on further coverage measures based on layers, so we will see what the future holds. Much of the machine learning model quality depends on the training and test data. This brings us to the issue of data-sensitive faults. They cause a failure in response to some particular pattern of data. Detecting such errors is quite challenging. Therefore, it is very important to test training and test data at the preparation stage. There are several industry approaches here. Data collection control. In this case, experts develop requirements for data collection process. Then an environment is created which meets these requirements. And after that, data is collected from this environment. But still, it is not always possible to take into account all the aspects that may affect the model. Train, test, data mutation. Mutation testing is a technique that injects artificial faults into a system under test guided by the assumption that the ability to expose such artificial faults translates into the ability to expose real faults as well. In train test data mutation, Certain changes are introduced to the training and test data, but this adds degree of difficulty because after each mutation it is required to retrain the model and compare if this behavior changed it in comparison with the previous iteration. And as we have seen earlier, the must-have for any machine learning development project is exploratory data analysis. It leads to stakeholders having a better understanding of the data characteristics and what real-world scenarios they represent. The presence of subject matter experts is important at this stage, as some characteristics that an engineer or statistician might classify as incorrect may be important from a business perspective. You cannot single out just one of these three strategies, be it black box, white box, or data box, so it is better to combine them. For instance, if we know which use cases exist in trained test data, we lean on this knowledge during test generation at the input testing phase, and then use it to better define the coverage criteria for activation testing. It is no secret that AI-based systems are used in a lot of operational environments. This implies that when those systems are tested, they require an equal variety of test environments. It is also worth noting that the characteristics of AI-based systems can cause the test environments to differ from those for conventional systems. These characteristics include self-learning. 
Self-learning systems and some autonomous systems are expected to adapt to changing operational environments that may not have been fully defined when the system was initially deployed. As a result, describing test environments that can replicate these undefined environmental changes is complicated. Autonomy. Autonomous systems are expected to respond to changes in their environment without human intervention and also recognize situations where control should be given back to humans. Some systems are designed for hazardous environments, so setting up test environments for that could be quite a challenge. Multi-agency. Where multi-agent AI-based systems are expected to work with other AI-based systems, the test environment may need to incorporate a level of non-determinism so that it can mimic the non-determinism of the EIB systems with which the system under test interacts. Explainability. The nature of some AIB systems can make it difficult to determine how the system made its decisions. So the test environment may need to incorporate a means of explaining how the system came to a particular decision. Hardware. Some of the hardware used to host AIB systems is specifically designed for this purpose. When it comes to the test environment, such hardware should be included as part of the relevant test planning. Big data. If an AIB system requires big data, the necessary measures should be implemented as part of a test environment setup. What are the benefits of using a virtual test environment when testing an AIB system? testing dangerous scenarios without any danger to the system under test, humans, or the operational environment, testing unusual scenarios when real operations are time-consuming or expensive to set up, testing extreme scenarios that otherwise would be impossible to test in real life, testing time-intensive scenarios in reduced timescales in a virtual environment, which leads to saving time usually spent on environment setup and testing. Observability and controllability are far greater in virtual test environments. And lastly, the issue of availability. The simulation of hardware by virtual test environments allows systems to be tested with simulated hardware components that otherwise may not be available. Perhaps they have not been developed yet or are too expensive. Virtual test environments may be built specifically for a given system, may be generic, or may be developed to support specific application domains. Both commercial and open source virtual test environments are available to support the AI based system testing. And that is it for this video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. In the next one, we will be talking about chapter 11 titled Using AI for Testing. As always, let me remind you that we do have a ton more awesome videos on our channel, so feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button. Thanks for watching and see you soon.